<laughs> Today's a cellar day here at Worth Brewing Company, and we're going to collect some yeast. So uh, we've just emptied that tank. Uh, we've kegged that beer. The rest of the tanks are full right now. Uh, we are going to take yeast out of fermenter four uh, to use in a future yeast. So um, yeast, of course, single cell organism that converts the starch or the, the sugars that we've created in the mash, turns them into alcohol, carbon dioxide, and heat, and it uh, just reproduces multiple times over. So we always have surplus of yeast. Um, if we are brewing often enough, we can reuse our yeast a certain number of generations. Uh, it's not a perfect system here at our small scale, but uh, we can count the yeast cells and calculate how much we need. We're going to take some good yeast, put it into this sanitized um, corny keg, and uh, we'll go ahead and start doing that. So Nick's going to take uh, our hose in a sanitized bucket here, hook that up, and we're going to dump the first bit of yeast. Uh, you're going to have a lot of dead cell cells there, um, some, uh, a lot of, some hop residue, some protein residue, things that we're not going to want to save for the next brew. Um, the runt is the nice middle layer because the end layer, while well, it looks clean, it gets a little watery and more likely to have more mutated yeast. It's kind of an imperfect skill here to try to grab that nice middle layer. We're taking this from a cream ale. It's generally pretty clean uh, yeast sludge. Sometimes, like our IPA, it'll be almost a green sludge coming out because of all the hop residue. All right, so Nick's gonna first start to uh, dump some of this early early yeast. It'll be almost a whipped cream, a shaving cream consistency as it comes out. This is a very predictable yeast here. This is our American uh, ale yeast, California ale yeast. Uh, and he's just throwing this, this is in a little bucket of sanitizer. That's already looks pretty liquidy, so we want to go slow. Um, a lot of times it's a little more dense than this. I'm going to go ahead and dump the sanitizer that's in our bucket here. Go ahead and start to load, save some of this yeast into this sanitized corny. We'll then keep this in our cooler and use this within a few days. Um, you can't just reuse yeast, store it willy nilly. You've got to be able to brew with it fairly quickly. Uh, and so you have to have several, a good cycle of beer using the same yeast to be able to go some generations. We usually go about six or seven generations before we start with a new yeast. Uh, a lot of advantages. Some people, have, studies have shown some more depth of flavor. Uh, obviously price is a big deal. If we started with a new culture, when we do, it's, it's more than $200 uh, for the batch. And of course this stuff is it's free for the taking. So we've um, I've done cell counts on a microscope. It gives us an analysis. Uh, an estimate of the, the millions, number of millions of cell yeast by volume that we need. So we collect the volume in here that we know will be right for the next batch. Um, again, this is a fairly watery, uh, watery yeast. But if you do cell counts, it'll count for all that um, for the various dilutions that you do. You take a diluted amount. Okay, let's stop that there. Fairly large three gallon corny today, full of, full of yeast. We'll label that. We, uh, we'll let it vent. We don't want to get under pressure. That uh, stresses the yeast. Uh, Nick's going to go ahead and keep dunk, dumping until he starts to see beer come out. And then uh, we're going to transfer this beer over to the bright tank today. We're going to crash the, we crashed the temperature last night, 
and we are going to check carbonation, maybe touch up the carbonation, and keg it for uh, shipment out tomorrow. Thanks for taking the time to look at the video. Uh, we'll have more coming up soon. Thanks.